Like many of you boys and girls, I started collecting rocks and minerals and even fossils at a young age. I think I was around nine or 10. And I looked forward to every weekend to kind of jump on my yellow and black BMX bike and go explore that neighborhood in Hinton where I grew up, where there's a lot of foundations being dug. So there's a lot of spoil piles. And I think there was even a gravel pit nearby. That was exciting because literally every rock that I'd pick up, I'd look at, you know, the crystal structures, the colors, then I'd pick up another one and I'd be like, wow, you know, for being in this specific location, just to see the variety of the different colors, the different shapes, and even the fossils that you'd find on the surface. And it just really kind of grabbed me at that young age. Well, it's interesting that here we are on this beautiful sandbar in the green ribbon of downtown Edmonton, which makes it quite special. Because again, a lot of people don't realize 40,000 years ago was the start of our last glaciation, the late Wisconsin, and about 14,000 years ago was the height of it. So when you think here we are, beautiful river behind me, but essentially there was over a kilometer of ice above my head 14,000 years ago at the height of it. And then of course it turned for the retreat of the ice as we see today, where literally the two ice sheets, the Laurentide ice sheet from the east and the Cordilleran ice sheet to the west, kind of met in the Marlboro area between Edmonton and, and Jasper. And literally we know that because of the different rocks. Yeah, and that's why I'm kind of giving you like the uh, kind of the overview of what you can find in the River Valley. And now all of the ones that you collected today, now you can almost like educate yourself. Be like, oh, does it look like this? Does it look like this? But you see you have coal, right? The low grade coal, the lignite. There's so much coal deposits here in the North Saskatchewan River Valley and how Edmonton has, you know, uh, an extensive coal mining history and with this lignite coal, even in the Lake Wabaman area, they're actually burning this to generate electricity. And then we have basically two samples of that and then three samples of the pink granite. And here's dinosaur bone. I'm not sure if you've ever handled dinosaur bone, but if you look, you can see the bone marrow, right? So we actually can yeah. find dinosaur bones yeah. if you're lucky. Yeah. Your hands are wet? Yeah, you feel that it's like a sticker, right? If you hold your hand flat, keep your hand flat and then be like, you feel it sticking to you. Daddy, I this. Oh, that's an iron stone concretion. And look, my girl, do you see how it's comparable to these? But you see how amazing they look? They almost look like turtle shells or meteorites, right? This one, for the average person, they'd almost think, oh, that looks like a meteorite. Dad, what's this? Right? Because feel how heavy that is. Daddy, what's this? And. What do you guys think these are? There's four of them that are the same and you probably found some. That's right, because you can really see the grains of the wood. That's your five wood. Yeah, do you see it? Mm -hmm. Right, they're not the rings of the tree because it's not a cross section of it, but you see it's the side. You can almost look at and see the bark. And then you can see, look how beautiful this is. And when we were saying about the different micas, right? There's, you bet, there's Phlogophyte, muscovite, and biotite. And you see this rock sample, which we call a schist, has two of those three types of mica. That's what makes it look like little diamonds, right? If you hold it in the sun and make it look like it glitters. So this one's a sandstone, and these are quartzite, especially this one. Doesn't this look beautiful? And then when you think for these ones, right, when you think of sandstone, right, there's a lot of buildings in Edmonton made of sandstone or Tyndall stone. But when you think if you bury sandstone deep enough, all that heat and pressure that gets developed because of all of that sediment pushing down on it, because it's, of course, hundreds of meters below the surface, it turns it into quartzite. And then you can't see the sand grains. And when you tap them, it almost sounds like glass. Right? It doesn't seem very hollow, right? You can see. Yeah, you bet. And what's really special about here is when you think this used to be a sandstone that turned into quartzite. But when you think of all of the ironstone staining, so when you think there's a lot of sediments in the Alberta area that has lots of iron in it. So when you think of that runoff and it makes real cool natural art. When you think of look at the waviness, it almost looks like someone painted that rock but it was naturally made you can kind of see how the water that was rich in iron just sat there for a while basically transformed it from a white rock to something very colorful and special
what you're what you just discovered is a pink granite so very nice so this is how glacial geologists know that the Laurentide ice sheet was sitting above us here in Edmonton and a lot of people don't realize too this Canadian shield piece of rock right this pink granite is approximately three billion years old so when you think for people that walk the river valley you're holding a good chunk of the earth's history do you see how there's a variety that even though they're from the Canadian Shield, you see how they're different. You see how the crystals are much larger than the crystals here. And, and when you think when granite is forming in the belly of Mother Earth, if it has lots of time to cool, the crystals get larger and larger. And that's where you see really big quartz crystals. And then this one, it almost looks like a conglomerate, but it's more on the granite side. So you can see there's other granites that you find in the river valley that are not pink, but you can see there's lots of quartz and you see the little black specks? We call that biotite. So I encourage you to reconnect and rediscover your backyard because Edmonton's very lucky that we have such a beautiful river valley with so much history and it's right here for us to enjoy each and every day and each and every weekend. Hi, hi. hi.